Hey everyone, it's Sasha Erickson. I hope you're all doing well today. It is September 3rd of 2016 and I am here to share a very important video with you today. Um, there is a new phenomena that has come to my attention uh, recently, over the past few months. Um, it is something known as the Mandela Effect. Now how this essentially started was um, there was a large group of people who remembered Nelson Mandela clearly dying back in the 80s or the 90s. Um, and then there's this whole other reality where people believe that he died in 2013, just a few years ago. This started as one small thing that came to uh, this woman's attention. I believe her name was Fiona Broom. And um, it started as one thing, and she kind of, she has a blog or something like that, and she made a blog about it. And someone else said, no, Nelson Mandela definitely died in the 80s or the 90s. I remember seeing his funeral on TV. Then other people started pointing out things. Then other people started noticing things that they remembered to be true in their life and in their reality. And then all of these other people are saying, there's no way that could be true because I remember it like this. So what this brings us to is um, what we know as the existence of a possibility of a parallel reality. Now, of course, this is scientific theory, but um, science has come a long way <laughs> over the years. Now, you guys have heard me mention uh, the CERN Large Hadron Collider multiple times. That is the huge Hadron Collider that is located in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, this Large Hadron Collider is the Large Hadron Collider they use to create and find the God particle. Um, they are trying to defy um, the laws of God and physics and quantum physics, and they're trying to basically split the atom. And they're also trying to, once they split the atom, they want to um, discover what's known as dark matter. They believe dark matter is the energy that created all life. Um, the Big Bang, or whichever way you want to put it. However, um, scientists are not God. And most scientists actually tend to be atheists and do not believe in God. Not every scientist, but the majority of scientists believe in science. They don't believe in religion. They don't believe in faith. They don't believe in these type of things. So with their scientific minds, they have created this technology and every single time they turn this Large Hadron Collider on, many things happen. Uh, freak thunderstorms, um, earthquakes all over the world, people go missing, time goes missing, airplanes go missing out of the sky, like the Malaysia flight. Uh, you name it, really strange things start happening all over the world. Tons of species of animals are suddenly dead. This Large Hadron Collider is basically what they've created to be like a big time machine. If they go in and start messing with time, it's just like the old Doctor Who episodes or Fringe or The Twilight Zone, when they say, if you go back in time and change something, the future is also going to change. Okay, Just like Back to the Future, remember that movie? If Marty McFly, you know, did one thing to mess up in the past, then he may not even have his mother in the future, or he may not even exist in the future. Well, this is science fiction coming to life, you guys. It is official. CERN has turned this thing on. People are really starting to experience very strange synchronicities. So, first thing I would like for all of you to do is Google the Mandela Effect. M-A-N-D-E-L-A, -E like Nelson Mandela, Effect. There is a ton of information out there about this phenomenon. Now, I had many of my clients reach out to me and ask me to make a video about this topic. I normally don't do like video requests or anything like that unless I feel that the topic is pertaining to something that's truly important at this time. I've been hearing about this Mandela Effect over the past year and I just really didn't have time to look into it because I'd been so focused on writing my book, Diary of an Asset, and getting you know the stories that I felt humanity needs to know out there. Well, the funny thing was is that I couldn't really deny the Mandela Effect anymore because I myself, as I started doing the research, found multiple discrepancies of how I remember things happening and how things are now.
Now, I'm 38 years old. I was born in America on the West Coast, so most of my growing up from the late 70s onward, I was raised in America. I was raised on American television, American books, uh, you name it. So I'm very, very uh, familiar with pop culture, movie quotes, um, spelling. I was kind of a spelling bee nerd as a kid. I would always really know how to spell things. So things like how things are spelled and what logos look like and especially movie quotes and stuff like that. They're so deeply ingrained in my psyche. There's no way that I can misremember things of this nature. So as people with their own research started pointing out things that were different in one place and another place, I found so many things that are now, when I go to Google and search for this thing, whether it's a person, place, or thing, this person, place, or thing has completely changed. I really have to just get into examples. This video could get long. It could just end up being a series of videos called the Mandela Effect because there's so much to cover. I really don't know where to begin. In a nutshell, that's what's going on, okay? Now, what made me <clears throat> really become aware of this was that I actually did have a situation like the Mandela Effect happen in this book, in my book, Diary of an Asset. Now, there's two small entries that I want to read to you guys about, and I feel that what Sophia was experiencing in the book here is basically the Mandela Effect. Now, well, there's a really long, you know, entry where she's kind of talking about people that she runs into that seem a little bit off. Um, leading up to this place, she's seeing people that are in, the only thing she can describe is like people in, in skin suits. Um, and so now she's kind of just had this experience where she's seen some people that she believes that are other than human. And she's been going through a spiritual awakening for like five days straight. And now she's had her awakening. She's, things are going crazy and she's got to get out of her family's home and get back to her home. So that's kind of where we're at right here. Now these diary entries are real diary entries that came from my clients and I've just changed the names and the locations to protect everybody's privacy. But this is in fact a true story that happened to Sophia. Dear diary, I had been staying with my family during this time of my awakening and it was time for me to leave the safety of my surroundings and get back home to my apartment. The drive back was yet another strange experience. Exiting the small town I was staying at, I stopped to get gasoline and cigarettes for my long journey home. Entering the convenience store, I was overwhelmed with the eerie feeling of being watched. No cashier was working at the register, yet there was deafening Arabic music and chanting playing from the back room. I called out, hello, to see if anyone was there, and a very creepy man emerged from the back. The cashier was wearing a dark blue turban and had black eyes. He was wearing the human, the human suit that I had mentioned seeing before. So basically everywhere Sophia is going, she either sees humans that she knows are human, or she sees these people that have human features and human skin, but something is just plain off about them. Now, this man behaved strange towards me and seemed to stroke my hand longer than necessary when I gave him the money for my gasoline. Suddenly, I could understand the words coming from the radio station that he was listening to. It were passages from the Quran. I had heard this just recently in a documentary that I saw and knew that there was a dark side to Islam that many people were not aware of, but this felt out of the ordinary. I immediately ran out of the store as I felt this man reading my mind. I sped away from the shop and promised myself that I would never return again. The ride home was very long. The scenery was scattered with mountains and valleys all along the coast. While I was suddenly driving along, the radio station I was listening to changed from a hip-hop music station to a Christian radio talk show. The radio announcers seemed to be talking at first to each other and then it appeared to switch to them speaking directly to me. They kept telling me that God was guiding me to a new phase of my life. I had to find my purpose. The words they used were so personal. They matched up with every peak, valley, or freeway exit that I had passed. The next thing I knew, my car had become enveloped in clouds. Usually this would have scared the life out of me, but something felt ominous about the clouds. 
I somehow felt safe and protected by them. I was driving directly through a famous mountain peak near a very holy place. The next word I heard on the radio was pyramid. When I looked to my right, there it was, Pyramid Lake. These ruins were rugged rocks shaped similar to Aztec pyramids with many graduated steps. My heart started racing and I immediately tried to pull into the freeway exit. However, the exit was closed. The entire site was closed as a matter of fact, closed to the public. But why on God's green earth would they close the site to the public? I knew that this place was more than just a lake, more than just a mountain peak. It had an eerie vibe, the air seemed stagnant, and I do not remember seeing or hearing any animals or wildlife nearby. There are countless butterflies, bumblebees, and other small critters swarming around lakes all of the time. Why now would they simply disappear? There was something strange surrounding this lake. Something was just plain off about it. But for now, I have to leave this ominous place. I still have another 90 miles to drive before I reach my apartment. I will look into this further when my mind is clear because this place means something important. I can sense it. God has got me on GPS. Now as and this is just one little tiny spark in the Mandela effect. Now let me explain what stands out to me. When Sophia is in the store and the man that is talking to her can read her mind. Um, th this is what people are, are experiencing right now with this Mandela effect. They're running into people and they're, they're ba basically able to read their mind and they know that other people are reading their mind as well. Then when she's driving down, she's just driving home listening to a hip-hop station, and then suddenly she seems to kind of enter into another dimension or to slip through another one, and the radio instantly changes, and it instantly changes to a Christian talk show, a Christian radio talk show, and it was literally speaking directly to her. She drove through the mountain peak, drove through the clouds, and the next thing she saw was this ominous place known as Pyramid Lake. Um, I'm going to provide a photo of Pyramid Lake for you guys because this really is a real place. So in that exact moment, Sophia basically slipped into another dimension when she went through those mountain peaks. So now the Mandela effect will spread a little bit more onto the next day, which was May 6th of 2011. Dear Diary, I have so much more to tell you before I get some well-deserved sleep. When I got home to my apartment, everything changed yet again. I had multiple notices on my front door for the most random things. Packages were missing from my mailbox that should have arrived in the weeks before my arrival home. When I walked into the front door, it seemed as though someone had been in my apartment. Small, insignificant items were moved around on my shelves, and the cushions on my couch had been tossed around. Someone was here recently. I could feel it. I felt very unsafe, so I turned on the TV for some background noise to drown out the thoughts in my head. One of my favorite programs about a hospital was on. In fact, it was an episode I had already seen before, but things were slightly off about it yet again. The characters were not acting in their usual manner. The actors were using foul language and the entire tone of the show shifted to being extremely dark. I also felt as though they were talking directly to me again, like the folks that I had heard on the Christian radio talk show. But this was not comforting, nor inspiring. This was frightening. Once or twice in my past, I thought that the television was talking to me, but I always laughed it off as paranoia. But I see a pattern here of weird events. I turned off the TV, and now I am keeping the TV off for good. This day was intense. I don't know what's going on, but maybe after some sleep I will have some clarity. I hope that when I wake up, this was all simply a nightmare. However, I have a feeling that this is the most awake I have ever been in my entire life. Wish me luck. XO Sophia. So, Mandela Effect in Diary of an Asset. What 
is happening here. Sophia comes home after she's driven through this mountain peak. She's definitely switched in energy. She can tell that the minute that radio station switched, everything changed. So when she gets home, everything in her apartment is off. Things look, they're moved around, they're in the wrong places, but it's still her apartment. But she cannot shake the feeling that something is still off. She's looking around, everything in her apartment is there, but things are in different places and everything just seems strange. The TV situation, so she turns on the TV, she's like, okay, God, I'm just going to turn off the TV and maybe if I have background noise, I'll forget about this. And the TV show she's watching is a show she's seen multiple times before. The show that was normally a, 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 an uplifting, lighthearted comedy show has now turned to a show where the actors are cursing, they're saying dark things. And it was the same episode that she had already seen before. Yet something was off. This is the Mandela effect, yet again. You're in the same place you've always been. You're watching the same TV show you've always watched. But suddenly the lead actor is different. Suddenly there's a new character that was never there before. Suddenly the name and title of the show has changed. Small things like this. And if you bring it up to anybody in that state, they think you're crazy. They don't know what you're talking about. But now that the Mandela effect is a thing, people can share these stories. And the more that we connect the dots... It will spread and we will start to fill in the blanks as to what exactly is going on here. So the TV is talking to her. The radio station is talking to her. And this girl is completely sober. She's just driving home from her family's home, coming home after spending some family time away for a couple weeks. So no matter what she did, everywhere she looked around, things looked the same but they were slightly different slightly darker now a lot of things happen after that to Sophia and I don't want to get too sidetracked going on and on and on about the book or my book because that's not what this is about I just thought it was very strange that um, Sophia had gone through this back in 2011 and that I had written this chapter for her and I had not put two and two together that basically what happened to Sophia was that she experienced a timeline shift and um, she uh, experienced the Mandela effect. So it actually goes on and on and on as the book continues. There's, I've, I've only read on this channel just these few little pages that you see here. There's a lot more adventures that she goes through and a lot of it has to do with the Mandela effect. But what I'd like to do so I can stay on the topic of the Mandela Effect because many people that might find this video don't care about my book. They don't care about any of, of my experiences or Sophia's experiences. They want to know how this Mandela Effect thing will relate to them. Okay. How it first came to my attention was uh, one of my friends and clients. I won't say his name. I'll keep it private. Um, he had sent me an email in that um, basically he was very concerned and confused as to what was going on with our timeline right now and on our planet. And he said it basically started that he had gone to some museum with his children and um, they had an exhibit for the Berenstain Bears. And the Berenstain Bears were a family of bears that I grew up with reading their books um, and watching their cartoon on TV. I think my mother read me every Berenstain Bears book before I went to sleep, and I read them myself. Well, when my friend was at this place, he saw that the Berenstain Bears had this, you know, exhibit, and he said something to his kids and said, hey, they spelled their name wrong. And then everyone kind of, you know, said no or whatever. It, it, it didn't really go so far. But in his mind, he knew that the Berenstain Bears name had changed, the spelling. Now, when I was a child, I always knew the name of the Berenstain Bears to be spelled B-E-R-E-S-T-E-I-N, similar to Stein or Berenstain. From what I knew about the book, it was started by Jan and Stan Berenstain, and they were a Jewish couple, and their last name was definitely Berenstain or Berenstain, S-T-E-I-N. Well, at some point in history, and we still don't know when this happened, my friend said this happened, he noticed the change in 2008, so I don't know if this happened way before that, but um, now if you go and you look for any Berenstain Bears book, it now is spelled like a stain, B 
B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N, Baron Stain. Now, as a child, most children would be able to pronounce the word stain. They'd think it was funny. They'd make a joke out of it. Ha, 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 stain. But as a kid, I remember myself and all other kids I went to school with, we always called them the Berenstein Bears or Berenstein Bears because we saw the E and the I in there. Well, now, no matter where you look on the Internet, no matter if you find an old Berenstein Bears book, and I had some of my clients, I put this on Facebook, I said, and my friends, please, if anyone has Berenstein Bears books, please take a photo and show me. Many people found their books, and they are all spelled Baron Stain, S-T-A-I-N. So I found some other researchers that were not buying it. They're like, I know it was Baron Stein or Stain. There's no way it was Stain. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. So several people went digging, and they were able to kind of go back on the Internet far enough back that they could find these kind of screenshots that had been taken of the Internet over time. There was an 80s cartoon website uh, where Berenstein was spelled Berenstein back in like the early 2000s. At some point, some programmer or somebody, web, de web developer, web designer, went in and changed the name. Now they changed the name on the title of the page, but if you go up to the URL, it still says Berenstein. Now this is just one little example. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I understand the way it was misspelled. Maybe my client had the spelling wrong. But again, my childhood memories, I was a real spelling bee nerd. I always knew how to spell things, especially books that I read a lot. So maybe that's not such a big example of the Berenstein Bears, but this is how it kind of started for me. So I started to look deeper into this um, phenomena and I found some more examples. And I think I'll try to just copy and paste some images throughout this video in between for you guys so you can get a, a stronger sense of what's going on here. What I believe is what's going on, I'm just going to cut to the chase, is I've been talking about CERN for a very long time, the Large Hadron Collider. When they start doing this stuff, if they go back and change something in time, let's say one of the scientists at CERN said, hey, wonder what the world would be like if Nelson Mandela never died. Let's see what happens. This is just an example, if and why it's called the Mandela Effect. It could have started way before him, I don't know. But let's say they went back in time and changed the world as to where Nelson Mandela didn't die until 2013, okay? All these slight things are going to change. All these slight things are going to be off. Because if you mess with time travel, you change anything from the past, everything's going to be off. So I believe this was some type of an almost computer glitch. If it, if it was only happening on computers, I would know. This is some weird computer hoax hack thing. They've scrubbed Google, they've scrubbed Wikipedia, they've taken every image from the internet, and they've done something. I believe technology can easily be manipulated by that. What they're really using are quantum computers as well. And that's another thing that, again, I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to get into quantum computers, but please Google that. Um, they're messing with time and space. They're messing with God. And there is clues left behind. And for those of us that have a lot of faith and a lot of belief and remember who we are and what we're doing here and remember the truth, I feel like it's kind of our duty right now to put these dots together and re-remind everybody the truth about humanity, the truth about our past. Someone is trying to erase the past. And younger people, they're not going to notice this. Even my own children and, and their, you know, I have a daughter who's almost 19 and a son who's almost 17 this year. And they missed a lot of these pop culture things. So I don't even know if I presented these things to them, would they know? You know? Um, it's very fascinating. So I don't want to get sidetracked again, but let's get back to some more examples for Mandela Effect. This next one really frustrated me. This one is the Jiffy versus Jiff debate. Now, when I was a kid, again, I was born in 78. When I was a kid, I loved peanut butter. I still do. I live in Norway now half of the year. We can't even get peanut butter. It's crazy. If you can, it's like $10 a jar. It's insane. So I ate a lot of peanut butter when I was a kid. 
And my favorite peanut butter was Jiffy peanut butter. Everybody got, has got to remember Jiffy peanut butter. Now, Jiffy had, J-I-F-F-Y had kind of like these three colored lines in the back. And a lot of times there'd be this little animated guy with like a, a knife that he was going to spread on the Jiffy on your bread. Now, these commercials, I believe, started like back in the 40s and 50s. And um, I just remember them being repeated and repeated on TV. And um, so anyway, someone else said to me, well, what's up with Jiff and Jiffy then? Once I brought up Berenstain Bears. And I was like, no, what are you talking about, Jiff and Jiffy? So I looked it up. Jiffy, apparently, has never been Jiffy. It has always been Jiff. J-I-F. Now, I recall over the past few years hearing a new slogan that said, Choosy Moms, Choose Jiff. Now, I thought this was like a healthy alternative for the original Jiffy peanut butter, and maybe they brought in kind of like a healthy reduced fat version of, of Jiffy and called it Jiff. And then maybe even at some point they kind of did like an update on their marketing or something, and they just decided that they wanted to have um, a new name. Now that I can totally accept, but it was really, really bothering me because I, I, I just knew that it was Jiffy. So I started looking everywhere on the internet. I started to find as many photos as I could to see if there was any photos at all that still had Jiffy on them. Now, I was able to find one drawing that someone had screenshotted off of an old um, kind of display at the front of a restaurant where the little Jiffy peanut butter guy is standing there and he's got his knife. And it says Jiffy. He's got legs and arms and it's Jiffy peanut butter guy. Because they have these world famous Jiffy burgers that people can eat all over the world. It's like a peanut butter burger. Pretty crazy. Actually pretty good. So this is like a world famous burger. Jiffy burger. One guy was so convinced that it was Jiffy. He went around calling all of the restaurants that sold the Jiffy burger. You can go online and type in Jiffy burger. You will find multiple restaurants that cover, carry something called the Jiffy Burger. But if you ask them what type of peanut butter they use, they say Jiff or they say Skippy. So he got really frustrated, called a million places, and they all told him, no, it's never been Jiffy. So I took it upon myself because this was one I was really, really, really convinced about. And I, I emailed Jiff. I contacted the corporation Jiff. And surprisingly, they got back to me within a couple of hours. I will also put a screenshot for you guys uh, in this video so you can see that I really did receive a response back from Jif. Jif. I don't even like to say it. Okay. September 1st, 2016. Dear Stasha, thank you for contacting the JM Smucker Company regarding Jif. Trademark. We appreciate your interest in our company and products. In response to your inquiry, our Jif was never called Jiffy. The name Jif was chosen because it was easy to say, easy to spell, and easy to remember. I love how she's mocking me within the letter because if it was so easy to remember, wouldn't I remember? Jiffy is a baking mix brand. Yeah, well, I know Jiffy's a baking mix brown. I make Jiffy cornbread. That's not even close to being the same thing. In fact, I remember when I was a kid, I would often be like, wonder why Jiffy's a peanut butter and a baking product. These are things I remember. So then she says, Jiffy is a baking mix brand. If you should have any further questions or need additional information, please visit us at www.jiff.com or contact us at 800-283-8915 Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sincerely, Carla, Consumer Relations Representative. Well, thanks, Carla. <laughs> thanks for getting back to me, Carla, but I don't appreciate how you responded to say how easy it was to spell and remember and say. I think the word spell is the active word in that letter because I believe we've been put under some kind of a spell. This was definitely called Jiffy. And why is such a huge corporation emailing me back within like an hour? I can email 
multiple companies that are big like that and don't get responses back for like a week, even if it's something super important. But yet within one hour I had that response. As if there's been many people that have contacted them and they already had this response prepared. I would actually challenge many of you to email Jam Smucker and ask them. Um, you'll see their, their email address and website on the image that I provide. So there you go. So for anybody who was convinced that it was Jiffy, apparently it never was. So again, these could just be two small things, Berenstein Bears and Jiffy, that I don't remember, but something is up. Something is up. Because apparently in this reality, Jiffy never existed. And I have a photo of the Jiffy guy, too. I'll go ahead and show you guys a little screenshot of him. Yeah, these videos are going to be long. I know I haven't done content in a long time, but I'm really glad that the Universal Father and all of you brought this to my attention because now I know that I'm here to help you guys again on something super important. I also want to say thank you to everybody who was in, involved in the uh, solar eclipse Virgo new moon healing just 48 hours ago. It was really powerful. and Thank you all for showing up. When I did that ceremony, I was actually asking the Universal Father to do a energetic adjustment of the entire planet based on the Mandela effect. I wanted to adjust the effect so that either everybody can start remembering how things really were or figures, I don't know. I have yet to find a person on this topic that actually knows what's going on. We're all theoretical at this point, but this is how we get to the bottom of things. Okay. Now, there were some other things that were brought to my attention. There were some severe changes to our maps. Yeah, our world maps, including globes that people own, like the ones you spin around. Physical globes have changed. Every Google map and Earth map has changed. Printed maps in books have changed. And there's been so many changes that I almost don't have enough time to cover them all. The main changes that I noticed, Australia, is now in a completely different place. It has moved all the way west. It used to be towards the east. It's moved like almost if you take Australia and you move it completely over the whole size of it, it's shifted completely towards the west. New Zealand. I did a, a project on this when I was like in junior high or high school about all the different countries of the world. and I chose New Zealand and I had to do a, a, a report on New Zealand. When I did the report on New Zealand, it was definitely east of Australia. Well now, if you go and look at New Zealand, not only has it shrunk down to the smallest size, it's now two islands that are completely to the southwest of Australia, nowhere near where they used to be. I even asked a friend of mine from New Zealand if she could go and look on a map and tell me if New Zealand looked different to her, and she said that it did. Okay, so I've spoken and confirmed to someone from New Zealand, please go look at New Zealand. It has moved. Also, South America. I'm from America. We had to do reports on this stuff all the time where we had to draw out the map of North America all the way down to South America. When I was a kid, North and South America were basically on top of each other, parallel. Now when you look at South America, it has moved again to the west. It's like some are going this way and some are going that way, but everything has changed. So look at South America. Another thing that happened was I was um, on my website just checking analytics to see what new visitors had come um, to my website and went from, from what area they had come from. And as I was looking at the analytics on a Google map, I saw the screenshot of this the sea that I had never seen before. Now, in the book, Diary of an Asset, at the very last chapter of the book, Sophia Snow and Bjorn Bauer go to Antarctica. Now, in order for me to write that chapter of the book, I had to do an intense amount of research into Antarctica and the different routes that you take to get there. Well, the route that used to be able that you used to be able to get there was something completely different known as like the Ross Sea. Now, <laughs> when you go, oh, where did it go? Now, when you go and look at the bottom of South America, which is leading down to Antarctica, because this is how you have to get to Antarctica. You have to go to the southern regions of the planet, and then you have to you have to fly all the way down to the southern regions 
of South America, and then you have to take a ferry or a boat from there down to Antarctica. It's the only way you can get there. <laughs> Through the Ross Sea. Now I have done a screenshot of the South Atlantic Ocean that is from South America leading down to Antarctica. It is no longer the Ross Sea. We now have something known as the Scotia Sea. Now, for those of you who have followed me for many years, unfortunately this book is or this video is not on my internet or on this YouTube channel anymore. But my husband and I had gone to Ireland and we retraced the steps of an Egyptian princess who was known as Princess Scotia. She's actually who the land of Scotland was named after her. And uh, she's buried in Ireland of all places because uh, she was aligned. Um, well, her love was a man by the name of Gael Glass. And Gael Glass was the man who brought uh, the Gaelic people and the Gaelic language to Ireland. Now, we went retracing the footsteps of Scotia back in 2013, and we went to Terra Mounds and the Hill of Terra and to the Stone of Destiny. And we did ceremonies there, we did healing, we prayed for Scotia. Scotia was kind of like this very hidden, forgotten about, extremely important person. She's been almost erased out of our history. One of the only people I've heard talk about Scotia is a man by the name of Michael Tessarion, who is a researcher, an author, and a lecturer, and he talks a lot about topics similar to I do. But um, there was definitely never a Scotia Sea. There was also definitely never a Scotia tectonic plate. As I kept digging, there was a Scotia tectonic plate, a Scotia Sea, and every other thing named Scotia that you can imagine from South America down to Antarctica. Scotia spelled C-O-A-T-I-A. I don't know what's going on here, but I always knew Scotia was important, and now suddenly she has this huge sea and all these things dedicated to her in South America on the way to Antarctica. Weird. There's a lot of other stuff. Um, that was off about maps. Another one that really stood out to me was that apparently Saudi Arabia is an island floating in the center of the Middle East surrounded by huge bodies of water, the Red Sea. From what I knew, now I've done videos about Mecca and the Black Cube and all of these things. Anytime I looked at a map of Saudi Arabia, it was smack dab in the middle of the Middle East, surrounded by desert. There was it was definitely not an island surrounded by a body of water. So yeah, that pretty much blew my mind. I had no idea Saudi Arabia was an island. In fact, I have a, a, a one really good friend there. And I know she watches my videos, and I won't say her name, but I'm going to ask you about this because I really don't think Saudi Arabia is an island. Anyway, something's up, y'all. Go look at what's going on. Now, there was another uh, thing that came up. And by the way, I'm only on example number four right now. There's literally about 500 of these, so I do think this will be an ongoing video series. I don't want to make it super long today. Um, I'll wrap it up with one more thing that came to my attention, and that was many logos that, as we knew them and how they once were, have completely changed. Now, of course, companies go through marketing changes, brand changes, all of these things, but the examples that have been presented in the Mandela Effect, no, there is no trace of any change of branding on any of these products, okay? Now, the first one that came to my attention was the VW logo, in other words, Volkswagen cars. The VW logo was one that's actually quite a pop culture icon. The Beastie Boys used to wear them around their neck in chains. And we all know how it looks, right? It's a V and a W, and it's all in one circle, and it's all connected. Well, apparently, the VW logo has never been connected. If you look at the VW logo now, there is now a complete split or a cut in between the V and the W. Basically, if the VW symbol had been created like a sigil, whatever the sigil was created to do has now been undone. Now, sorry, I have some newborn cats here. They're uh, very cute. Hold on. 
Okay, this is little Freya. She's just a couple weeks old, and she heard me doing a video, and she wanted to say hi to you guys. Say hi to the world, Freya. <laughs> oh, she's really cute. Such a good baby girl. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Got to be mom here, too. I can't just uh, teach all day. But anyway, Volkswagen. It now has a dash in the V. So if this was some type of a sigil or symbol, because we know these symbols and sigils are very powerful. Corporations use these things all the time to reach success. Well, that symbol no longer works. So I don't know what the connection is, but I do know that Volkswagen had a lot to do with Germany and had quite a bit to do with, um, well, a part of the Nazi time and Hitler and all that stuff because... Um, they were helping Hitler to create vehicles. Military vehicles, and if you even look at the emblem or badge for the SS, I believe it has the VW logo emblazoned into it, kind of below a black eagle. So, um, very interesting. Another thing about Volkswagen, I always knew Volkswagen to be spelled with an O, as in a wagon, W-A-G-O-N. Well, apparently it's never been spelled with an O. It has always been W-A-G-E-N, Volkswagen. Well, we've looked everywhere throughout history and it's never been called Volkswagen. And apparently if it has been called Volkswagen, it has been removed from history as well. There's no trace of it anywhere. My husband and I were so obsessed with this fact that we went out looking for Volkswagens all over the city. My husband and I used to have a Volkswagen. We had a Golf not that long ago. And uh, everywhere we went in the city, the VW was broken with a dash in it. Now, I know all of you remember the V and the W being connected. But if you don't, if you remember Berenstain Bears as Berenstain with an A, please let me know in the comments. If you remember Berenstein or Berenstein with an E, please let me know in the comments. What else did we cover today? We covered... Jiffy versus Jiff. If you remember Jiffy, please tell me in the comments. If you remember Jiff, please tell me in the comments. The changes of the maps. If any of you guys notice additional things other than what I that I brought up or pointed out to you, please put them in the comments below. Also, uh, the VW phenomenon. Do you remember it as Volkswagen or Volkswagen? Which one is it? Do you remember the V and the W being connected or were they always broken? This is literally just the tip of the iceberg. Today, <laughs> sorry guys, hey, yeah, come on. Today I really just wanted to get to the bottom of some of these important synchronicities. There's definitely something happening on this planet. There's definitely something going on in the universe. Um, I think Freya's feeling it. I think all my animals are feeling it. I think all human beings are feeling this right now. There's a change happening. And whatever it is, if we just get together with each other and we compare notes and we support each other and we don't call each other crazy, there's been many instances of people actually remembering things the complete opposite, like maybe two out of the four things they remember one way, but the other two out of four things they remember a different way, yet they'll have parallel memories from people from this memory of reality and they'll have other parallel memories that align with other people's memories of reality. So this seems to me like it's a big old clusterfuck Brought to you by CERN. So thanks a lot, CERN. Uh, you think that we wouldn't notice? <laughs> we're very perceptive. And we're not, you know, made of technology. We're not robots. We're human beings. So we're definitely going to notice when things are off. I have so many more things that I want to bring to you guys about this topic. But today I'm going to cut this video short. I'll get into the movie quotes next time. I will also get into the Bible. Oh, because let me tell you. These fools have messed with our Bible. Now, you all know I have a degree in theology, so I have a bit of a knowledge about how scripture goes down. Well, a lot of scripture has changed. I've been checking multiple Bibles. I have one here in English. I have one in Norwegian. This one's also in Norwegian. And I have... Oh, who's this from? These are This is like the Mormon Bible, which is in English. And I even have... The Bible that was presented to me when I was a young girl. 
every single Bible has the same discrepancy. <laughs> I'll give you guys a little assignment. Who remembers the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those or as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, it's changed. <laughs> go look up, go in your Bible and look up the Lord's Prayer and tell me if it still talks about trespasses. This is crazy. I don't know where we are, where we've gone or what's happening, but it feels almost like a little bit of a mini rapture, a mini awakening, like half of us are remembering things how they used to be and the other half of people are kind of in some kind of zombie dream world where they are like, what? What are you guys talking about? You're all crazy. Well, I think the key here is synchronicity and filling in the blanks and uh, noticing that things are definitely off. So start looking around you. Start watching old uh, movies. Start reading old books and see if anything changed. Most likely, it will be some of the most um, important things that usually stood out to you. Your favorite movie quote, your favorite line of scripture. These are the things that are now changing. My favorite one that had changed of the scripture was uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, which used to read, Judge not, lest ye be judged. And now it actually says, Judge not, lest ye be not judged. Doesn't that kind of mean the opposite? There's so many. I could be here all day. I'm going to wrap it up now. Go Google the Mandela Effect. Look up the things that I pointed out to you. Please leave comments in the description box. More of the Mandela Effect is unfolding in Diary of an Asset. So if you're interested, go to Amazon. You can buy it for $2.99 on Kindle or you can buy it for $12.99 on paperback. And if you have experienced the Mandela Effect, you will definitely be able to relate to Sophia Snow and everything that she went through. So I love you all ever so much. I hope this uh, little video has brought you some information today. And I wish you all luck out there. The main thing I have to say is that we've read about this in the Bible. There's supposed to be a period of what is known as the Grand Delusion or the Great Deception. And um, during this time, we will be deceived with our own eyes, where some people will see things one way and others will see it another. It's okay to look into these things and try to get to the bottom of them, but do not get lost. Do not get carried away with the conspiracy. Don't get carried away with what ifs and what this could be. Don't be afraid. This is, to me, some type of a graduation, a leveling up, a spiritual growth period for all humans. So if one of us is experiencing it, it is going to ripple out and soon everybody will benefit from this. I think it's a good thing what's happening with this Mandela Effect. I don't think it's anything scary. Yes, CERN might have done this uh, by mistake, but I think that humans are so much more powerful than a machine or a tool that whatever they've done to, to throw things off, with love and faith and patience and hope and coming together, we can adjust this Mandela effect. We can, and soon everybody will remember things how they used to be. Okay, I love you all so much. Bye-bye.